Dear friends, welcome back to Divine Ray's YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about how to deal with the depression during coronavirus. Now it's almost six months, the entire planet is trying to fine tune itself with the outbreak of the global COVID-19 pandemic. And we know countless people are enthralled by anguish and despair. If seclusion, apprehension, economic ambiguity, and the daily onslaught of bad news generated by the coronavirus pandemic are taking a heavy toll on your mood, you are not alone. Certainly, this is an anxious and uncertain time. Even though many places started to unlock again, after months of lockdown, the end of this ordeal still seems very vague. Yes, the pandemic is harming the mental health of the entire universe. The very thought of the strain of unrelenting social isolation, the fret about jobs, the uncertainty about finance, and the anxiety about if and when the financial system or the economy will pick up. Besides all of these concerns, some of you may be grieving the loss of your loved ones or the life you knew before the pandemic and the feelings of loss that many are experiencing at the moment can trigger depression for the first time or escalate the symptoms. Therefore, living in the era of coronavirus can have a stern effect on your frame of mind. When you go through depression, life can seem devastatingly bleak and hopeless. It can hamper your ability to think straight. It can drain your energy and make it complex to get through the day. Even as some countries and regions began to ease stay-at-home restrictions, it seems improbable that life will fully return to normal anytime soon. But no matter what constraints you are living under at the moment, certain strategies can surely help you counteract loneliness, ease negative thoughts, improve your mood and cough with symptoms of depression. First and foremost, let's know what is depression. Most of us know that depression is a mood disorder that affects the way you think, feel, and behave. It causes feelings of sadness or hopelessness that can last anywhere from a few days to a few years. This is different than being upset about a minor setback or disappointment in your day. It's not that all of us are getting into depression. I'm only reminding that these days are heavily loaded with tension, stress, and disturbances due to COVID-19 that can cause many of us to be depressive. I hope I'm getting across to you correctly. What could be the reasons that one can become depressed, especially during this time of COVID-19? Isolation and loneliness can easily fuel depression. Human beings are collective beings being cut off from the love, support, and close contact of family and friends can trigger depression or make existing symptoms worse. Months of social distancing and sheltering at home can leave you feeling isolated and lonely, having to face your problems all alone. Next could be a disturbed relationship. It can be even worse than loneliness. Although strong and encouraging relationships are essential for your mental well-being, being forced to spend months quarantined in a troubled, unhappy or abusive relationship 
or a similar surrounding can be even more detrimental to your disposition than being alone. Another reason would be anxiety that can lead you to depression. All the fear and uncertainty surrounding COVID-19 means it's natural to worry. When your worries spiral out of control, they can cause panic and anxiety. Since anxiety and depression are believed to stem from the same biological vulnerability, one can often lead to the other. The next reason could be when your stress levels get elevated. Experiencing a major change in your life, such as the death of a loved one, the loss of job, being diagnosed with a serious illness, financial crunch or relationship difficulties can bring crushing levels of stress. As a result of this pandemic, you may be experiencing quite a lot of above mentioned major stressors at once, making you more vulnerable to depression. Hence, it's natural that these are painful and tormenting times and few people have much to be cheerful about at the moment. But at the same time, depression can make things seem even worse than they really are. With everything going on around, people can find themselves ruminating, not knowing how long, how and when to be in good cheer and conduct. While the need to maintain social distance creates some obstacles, there are definite steps you can take to make the best of the worst. But it needs real personal discipline, motivation, self-confidence and conviction to take care of oneself and others to keep robust and stable at this present scenario. The question is, are we ready and prepared to spend some time to safeguard ourselves and others? There is no easy fix for recovering from depression and finding the energy and stimulus to take the first step can be tough. But you know you have more power over your mood than you may realize. When you are depressed, everything is filtered through a lens of negativity. So, first step is awareness. By simply recognizing that you can start to change your focus and take the first step to feeling more optimistic. Secondly, distract yourself. When you are depressed, out of work and isolated from your social network, the negative thoughts running over and over in your head can seem never ending. But you can break the cycle by focusing on something that adds meaning and purpose to your life. That will lead you to the next step, that is, focus on starting a project. Perhaps there's something you have always wanted to learn, like a new language, or a musical instrument, or perhaps you always wanted to write a novel, or take up cooking, bring up or grow something that you can see with your eyes something that will bring forth life and of your choice of plants or grow your own vegetables. Focusing on a project or goal, even a small one, can give you a welcome break from negative thoughts and worries and add a sense of meaning to your days. How is this possible? For example, it will be amazing to see a very tiny seed that you have sown in the soil few days ago, sprouting and coming out of the mud all of a sudden. You would routinely be after it to see if it is sprouting. Even some of you might literally dig out to see what's happening to this tiny seed, all because of your sheer curiosity. And you know, there's always a little child in all of us, however grown up we have become. When you see it in the form of a tiny, cute little plant, you will feel ecstatic and exuberant because you are witnessing new life in front of you. You will begin to visit the plants daily 
even tries, water it, manure it, give shade to it to protect from the sun and rain. You begin to talk to them and will see the change in yourself. There is not much time to think about yourself now because your attention is diverted to something productive, something tangible to your eyes. Thus, you experience a feeling of wow, there is something more to life than to be sad and life will return to you automatically. So be productive with your free time. Just because we are self-isolated doesn't mean that we need to truly isolate ourselves. Next could be discover simple sources of happiness. Although you can compel yourself to have fun, you can push yourself to do things that will enhance your mood throughout the day. Try listening to uplifting music or finding a reason to laugh by watching videos or YouTube or a beautiful movie that would elevate your drooping spirit. And you know, laughter is the best medicine to keep yourself cool. Spend some time in nature whether it's walking in the park, paddling on the beach, or going for a hike, can ease stress and put a smile on your face, even if you are alone. Try to find relaxing moments with your kids or pets. They will benefit as much as you will. Next, limit your time on news. I know you want to stay connected with the world, with everyone and remain informed of what's going on but all consumption of sensationalistic news or erratic information will only fuel your negativity and fear so limit how often you check news or social media and rely only on reputable sources maintain a routine sleeping too much or too little skipping meals or exercise and neglecting your personal care only feed into your depression. Establishing and maintaining a daily routine, on the other hand, are structured to your day, even if you are alone and out of work. So try to include set times for exercising, spending time outside and communicating with friends each day. Lots of individuals have lost their usual routines and that unstructured time can also lead to rumination and passivity. High risk factors for depression. It's natural for people to be upset when they are unemployed. Try to alter your state of mind. If you have lost your job, rather than seeing this as an enduring state of affairs, think of it as the time in between returning to work. Once the pandemic crisis is over, there will be pent up demand. One way of coping is to structure your time. So schedule your day down to the hour. At the end of the day, check things off and make a to-do list for the next day. So you can look forward to things. Thus, create a set of goals for the week and for the month then make some longer term goals. Try to express your gratitude. When you feel distressed, especially at this dreadful time, it can seem that everything in life is bleak and hopeless. But even in the darkest days, it's usually possible to find one thing you can be grateful about. The gift of your precious life, the fresh air that you breathe in, without any external demands, the beauty of a sunset, the texture and color of a flower, the laughter of an infant, the amusement of your pets or a phone call from a friend and many more simple but refreshing and invigorating experiences to be grateful to God for. It sounds flashy but acknowledging your gratitude can provide a respite or breathing space for negative thinking and really augment or enhance your mood. Coming to the next point, 
develop a sense of hope. This may sound unrealistic during a difficult time like this, but rather than to think that this is the rest of my life, take it day by day or week by week. Take a step back and see there is reason to be hopeful. Think of the positive things that are happening like stores and factories are beginning to reopen. By seeing certain solutions that work and continuing to take many safety measures, we are increasing the chances that the future is not as hopeless or severe as we fear. Connect with others even if not face to face. Set up a regular time each day to contact people and schedule virtual get-togethers on online platforms to talk or maybe even play games. If you have a loved one in the hospital or going through a hard time, it's easy to feel helpless, especially if you can't visit or help them feel better. But you can always tell people you love them and care about them. We often underrate how important it is to express connection, love and gratitude. And we can do that on an ongoing basis, not just when someone is sick alone. Reframe your perspective. It's okay to feel upset and to acknowledge to yourself and to others these are difficult times. Yet, this could be an opportunity to think about what you value or really want to do with your life. If you look at this spirit as deliberate practice of not going out to places where you enjoy, you may realize you can thrive without those routines. When the pandemic subsides and the emergency is lifted, you may find you appreciate the freedom to go to the gym or hang out with your friends even more. The pandemic may raise thoughts of mortality. A positive way of thinking about mortality is to recognize what's really important to you in life, which might be having meaningful relationships, contributing to the betterment of society, or being creative. Just because we can't interact with people face to face doesn't mean we need to be isolated and passive. It's normal to feel anxious, but we can process the experience. Keep active and connected. Maintain as much of a routine as we can and build resilience as we weather out the crisis. Staying home to prevent the spread of the virus is not easy, but you can find ways to maintain your well-being. Keep a journal. Write down your thoughts and feelings and what you are grateful for. It could be for the blessings that come to you in disguise through people, events and experiences. Some of the learning could be lessons for tomorrow to become a better person in our thoughts, words, attitudes and in our dealings. For change happens only when we realize our limitations and our mistakes, learn from it with humility. Finally, please stay at home and protect yourself, your family and others, as this is the worst period, lest we regret later. Thank you so much and God bless you.